Is murder always wrong? First, let's use a few different examples to kind of probe this question. Let's say somebody comes into your house and they start to brutally kill your entire family. Of course, in America, you have the right to defend and kill that person. Is that act of murder necessarily wrong if you are in the arms of defense? I would say most people would, I will, almost all people should argue that no, that is not wrong. In fact, it is probably ethically correct to defend yourself in that situation of life or death. But let's go to a more extreme example that the governments are actually pushing intentional murder quite often. Let's use the example of war. We have one team, good, which is your side. For whatever reason, a higher power tells you that you should fight this other side, that they have a, a moral and ethical difference from you, therefore they are bad and we should fight them to the death. So a bunch of men go out there and they're fighting to the death. But what's the difference in these two situations? When America, let's say, is fighting a different country, we have, me personally, if I'm at war with somebody, I have no relationship. That person has done absolutely nothing to me. Both sides are strictly being told what to do from the higher power, which is just saying that each side is ethically wrong. What is the problem with having moral differences with each other? Can me and Justin not have an ideological difference and still be fine with each other's presences? I mean, we 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 have differences with a lot of ways that we think, and that does not uh, prevent us from being friends in any way. It does not make us want to actually kill each other over such actions. Once upon a time after the Enlightenment started, people, that is armies or whatever, right, and the men who served in those armies, no woman I should note, but men, um, it, there used to be checks that would restrain slaughter. Again, like, Friedman talks about this uh, throughout history, but the point is that after, after the Enlightenment came along, the moral compass or like the, the mythology in a sense what what western europeans looked up to was broken and uh, and shattered and what was interesting was that the way the mind was shaped the western european mind was shaped let's say from the mid 1800s onwards or whatever was changed and so and when i say changed what i mean was is that the state was elevated to basically kind of like the central role or like the role of God, in a sense. I, you, you wouldn't necessarily call it God, but the point is the state was placed very, very high, and so therefore loyalty to the, to the state was placed very, very high. And if this loyalty that was placed very, very high required you to do horrible things, including lay down your life for the perceived benefit of the state, people were indoctrinated, and they, the mind was shaped in order to do so. And this would come into contrast with, let's say, you know, a few centuries before, where, yeah, people still went to war, and yeah, states did still project power over one another. But there, were there other, but there were other institutions to keep these things in check, like the church would be a good example of this from Western Europe. Anyways, um, it's very interesting. Uh, Nietzsche uh, basically foresaw this happening uh, with great clarity uh, when, when he was writing before he went insane. Uh, and he basically called out the failure and the horrors of the 20th century with astonishing precision. Anyways, that's a separate video. But Josh, to your point, is that when you have the state acting as an unchecked arbiter of what is right and what is wrong or whatever, right? Then the problem is, is that the state can be corrupted by other men who can basically kind of, you know, use this as like a, a parasite or a parasitical influence in order to get other men to do, you know, their bidding and oftentimes not for, you know, the good, or oftentimes for the good of the people running the state, not necessarily for the good of the state itself or the citizens that are supposed to be supporting. Yeah, let's take that exact same example and apply it to today. So the exact same people who would be in the street protesting against guns, per se, to say that all murder is wrong are the same people saying that we have to go to war against Putin because Putin is bad, therefore all Russians and bad are bad. And if all Russians are bad, all Russians must die. I mean, if you if you look at these, if you take these concepts and take them to the extremes, that is basically the, the scenario that we are coming at. There is there's no other solution besides if these people are bad, they must die. So Josh, what I hear you saying is you're expressing amazement about the cognitive dissonance that people are playing on themselves. In other words, on one hand, they hold that all murder is wrong. But on the other hand, they completely agree that we should go to war to stop Putin because he's a bad guy, probably because they've been told he's a bad guy. And of course, going to war implies that you will be engaging in the act of murder, or at least in the act of killing, shall we say. There's no mental reconciliation. There's no finesse. It's just basically whatever they've been told, they parrot back. What I find, and um, 
I, I found this, you know, to be a very good litmus test when dealing with the boomer generation. Not all of them, of course, but because we're talking about a generation, generalizations, I think, are permitted. They basically have the morality of a five-year-old, things that make them feel good or good, and things that make them feel bad or bad, and there's no mental reconciliation, there's no mental honesty or anything like this. Or if you present them with mental honesty, or you kind of call them out on the BS, you know, they just, you know, shut down. They've never been as a generation, certainly not all of them, but as a generation, they've never been forced to, you know, think bad thoughts or think hard thoughts. That's just my take. This is not to say that we are pro murder. In fact, it's the absolute complete opposite. I'm extraordinarily against war, but not for the reasons that you may be thinking. It, it's because I think that the the two people pulling the strings in these fights are wildly, uh, have wildly different motives than what they are portraying to the citizens that are the ones doing the act of war and, and the ones actually sacrificing and killing other people. And I think that is extraordinarily ethically wrong for the people who are sacrificing themselves being lied to as for the reasons as to why they're there. Yeah, there are the two thoughts that come to mind is the first thing, Josh, as you say, you know, the people pulling the strings and really what that boils down to is the people pulling the strings behind the people pulling the strings behind the people pulling the strings. You kind of wonder, you know, how far, you know, down this thing goes. It makes you wonder who really runs the world. Separate video. The second thing I would say is that um, there is a uh, part of, is it Proverbs or is it Psalms? There's a Bible verse, a song was based on it, where it basically talks about a time to kill. And I do think that there is a time and a place where the act of taking a life is is justified i think it's generally an extreme situation i think it's only one of the last things you would consider and i think there's also things where you could say it's done out of mercy like a coup de gras like a blow of mercy uh, for that you know like god forbid someone you love is in a you know a horrific car accident you know they're paralyzed and they'd be kept alive you know with ventilation or whatever right if you pull the plug and you terminate their life you know is that considered murder or is that more so you're just following their wishes where they did not want to be kept alive through extreme artificial means or whatever so again it's one of these very you know very nuanced questions that people like, and to think through these is hard, but people like, you know, the quick, easy fixes. Oh, you should never kill. Of course we can get behind that. Or, oh my goodness, we need to stop, you know, the current bad guy, because we've been told he's the current bad guy. And we should use whatever means, ends, or necessary, you know, to uh, to accomplish this, even if it completely violates the other, these other precepts that we just affirmed. So yeah, it, it, it is frustrating and uh, and dangerous. Yeah, I think what you just touched on is one of the biggest problems that we face today is that everything is black or white. And that yeah. is the complete opposite to to what the real world is like. These complex problems do not have simple solutions and we cannot treat them as if they do. So is murder wrong? That is a complex and uh, impossible to answer question where it needs to be looked at per circumstance. I would say that almost all murder is wrong within the concepts of war because these wars are fought on premises that are not the same as if someone breaks into your house and is is, threat, is trying to murder you. I think that is much more of a uh, self-defense mechanism than voluntarily sacrificing and sacrificing other people uh, yeah. oh oh and just because it goes beyond that too or whatever right because like if you're willing to defend your family with lethal force as i would say you have a moral obligation to do what this does is this puts pressure on the criminal saying okay well listen you know i know that if i go and burglar a home you know sure i can do that but i also understand that you know the homeowner might be armed you know might be packing or whatever right and i might lose my life and that is a huge deterrent again when it comes to i think the motivation of the species you know of course, sex is a big one, but what's even more important than sex is the fear of death. And so that's one of those things where I, I think that just the implied threat, or even like the death penalty might be a good example of this, the implied threat that if you do something that society deems so egregious and so extreme, you will pay the ultimate price. That in a strange way, I think allows a benefit to accrue to the members of society because it's it's the it's one of the final checks maybe the, maybe it is the final check for someone who would otherwise do a um a bad deed it's the fear of the consequence the legitimate fear of the consequence because you know the consequence will actually happen versus just you know be bullshitted away or whatever thank you and we'll see you on the next one